Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather on this Sunday. My first stop is going to be up to Breckenridge. A couple of things to mention here. You're just starting to see the uh, the weather and the storms building up this afternoon. We've got monsoon moisture crossing the state. Um, we've seen a little bit of a dusting on some of the very highest peaks over the last couple of days, and we might see another dusting 13, 14,000 feet this afternoon into tonight, but there are much better chances of snow. Look at that car driving up the road. Um, down the road. That hasn't changed. So I'll show you that um, and what I'm thinking. And this we talked about this yesterday, and all these points are still valid. Um, we've still got wildfire smoke. That is still a big issue. Um, the monsoon flow continues. Um, it, it always comes in surges, and then you get dry breaks in between, and then you kind of track the next surge, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. And the focal point for these surges is going to start to, they're going to start to collide and mesh with cold fronts. We've got at least two strong cold fronts, maybe even three in the extended forecast. And I think with each of those fronts, we'll probably see a chance of some snow, maybe like a dusting, maybe a few inches um, across the 13 or 14ers of Colorado, the highest peaks of, of uh, Utah up in the high Uintas, and potentially even in the Wind Rivers up there. And, and the dates are 9-11 to 9-12, somewhere in there. It could be 9-10, 9-11, 9-12, somewhere right in there. And then again with a second dip in the jet stream and cold front coming 9-19 and uh, also 9-20. All right, let me take you over to uh, the satellite here. And I want to show you what this looks like. So you're looking at water vapor here. You're looking at moisture in the atmosphere. And I, I like to show these in each show because it really gives you that global perspective on what's going on. So these yellows, these oranges, those colors represent drier air. Your moisture is right here. It's in these whites, in these greens. That's where your moisture is. So let me point out what we're seeing. This spinning feature right here, that's Hurricane Kiko. That is heading towards the Hawaiian Islands and will go just north of the Hawaiian Islands. Um, but what it will do as it goes by, and you can see the chain of Hawaiian Islands right there, is it, it's definitely going to send some big surf, quite a storm surge, a lot of big waves into the islands. Okay, so the other part of the pattern, you've got an area of low pressure here. Looks like you've got another one here. You've got another one behind it. So that's where the activity is right here. That's where your jet stream is running at this point. That's where the action is going to come from to hit the western United States and then eventually into the interior, into the interior Rockies. So that's what we're seeing on uh, satellite right now. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the wildfire smoke because that has been um, a huge issue. And I've stopped it. So this is, I'm going to start it today. So you're looking at basically early today, and that's what the smoke looked like. Uh, again, a lot of it coming out of BC, parts of the Pacific Northwest. You've got some feeding into the flow there from California, Idaho, Montana, all of that. And so it's kind of like a Northwest flow where it's bringing the snow or bringing the, uh, the, the smoke down in that direction. And I'm gonna step through this so you can see it. So we'll start it today, here we go, into the future. There's, um, there's 12 hours, so that's going to be late tonight. Okay, here's early tomorrow morning. And notice what's happening. A lot of that smoke in Colorado starts to thin. A lot of the smoke in Utah starts to thin out, unless you're in extreme northwest Utah. Some of the smoke in parts of Wyoming starts to thin out a little bit. Okay, here we are 36 hours into the future. And look at how clear Utah and Colorado are at that point. And even a lot of the smoke in parts of Idaho and Montana start to clear and get pushed away. All right, so here's 48 hours into the future right here. So you're looking at uh, you're looking at two days into the future, and look how much clearing has occurred across a lot of Colorado, a lot of Utah, even, I mean, you're not, we started out with the very deep red colors in a lot of Idaho and Montana and Wyoming, and a lot of that has improved. It's not totally perfect, but the concentrations of thick smoke have gone down. So to me, the forecast is wait about 36 to 48 hours, and you're going to start to see some significant improvement, maybe even earlier, across parts of the Intermountain West. So that's some really good news. 
Um, let me talk a little bit about um, what I'm seeing here as far as the forecast goes. So this is a, a forecast in the middle of the atmosphere. This is looking at pressures, atmospheric pressure. And where you see the blues, that's a drop in pressure. That would correspond to a dip in the jet or an area of low pressure, a cold front, if you will. The, uh, the oranges and the yellows, those are higher pressures. Those generally represent hotter, drier weather. But what I'm seeing here, and I showed you this yesterday, look at the dip right here in the jet stream, or these lower pressures in the middle of the atmosphere. This would correspond to an area of low pressure. This is valid um, on the 12th, so Friday, 9-12. Um, and this is what's going to bring that snow chance and the cooler temperatures to a lot of the inner mountain west, parts of Utah, parts of Wyoming, and parts of Colorado. Now that's 912. Let me take you to, this is 919. Look at how dramatic this is. These were, this is the second time frame we talked about yesterday, and it's still holding true today. So another big dip in the storm track, big dip in the jet stream, and I'll show you the jet stream here in a second, corresponding to a pretty, pretty big area of low pressure and probably a cold front. This would represent a chance of snow, accumulating snow across Montana, across Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and also the mountains of Colorado. We're not talking big snow. You know, it's on the lighter end, but at least it's something. In fact, let me show you, uh, we'll go back to Berthoud Pass in Colorado, here in Colorado, and this is a snow forecast out to about the 22nd of September, and notice how the chances of snow all go up as time goes on. And you can see the forecast sort of amounts up here. These would be um, average amounts, so you're not looking at high-end amounts on this. Um, and so you can see how the, it kind of goes up over the course of time as both of these areas of low pressure move into the west. So there's snow there even all the way down to Bertha Pass. And that's that's not, you know, that's in the 12s So in Colorado. And, and I was thinking that we'd see most of our snow in the 13ers and the 14ers in Colorado. This is just a very general look at the 15-day snowfall. And again, not looking at major amounts, but it's just that early season pattern developing. And you know, you can see a little bit of snow here in the mountains of Colorado, a little up here in the high Uintas of Utah, and then some up here towards Yellowstone and also the Wind Rivers. A touch maybe right there in Idaho, and maybe a touch in the high Sierra. Uh, and I don't wanna forget about BC, Alberta, a little bit of snow accumulation up there in some of the higher elevations. And again, this might represent one to four inches, maybe a little bit more on some of the very highest peaks, but at least it's something. Clear on out of there. Um, let me see, let's talk about the jet stream forecast. Now I adjusted the view because yesterday when I watched this back, I noticed that you couldn't see the time on this. So just notice right here, you, you can see the forecast time right here. So we're going to start it at about lunchtime today on Sunday, September 2nd. Um, and I'm going to move ahead in, in time here. Let me show you. We'll step ahead and here we go. All right, here we go. So there's early to midday on Monday, September 8th. There's midday on Tuesday, September 9th. Look out west. There's midday Wednesday, September 9th. Um, 10th right there and look what you've got here in the uh, coming into the west you've got a big dip in the jet stream area of low pressure and these are jet level winds I should have mentioned that at the top so when you see the colors those correspond to jet level winds up there at about 30,000 feet so the brighter the colors the higher the wind speeds um, you're probably looking at 100 mile an hour winds roughly uh, maybe maybe 90 coming into the west, but that's your first trough. That's your first dip in the jet. Now that's that's Wednesday. Watch how this progresses um, as we move into time. There's midday on Thursday, September 11th. There's Friday midday, and look at the trough. Look at the dip in the jet moving into the interior to Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, um, into Colorado. Okay, and then eventually that moves out. Let's step ahead. 
Here we are midday Monday, September 15th, another little cold front or dip in the jet moving into the inner mountain. And that just kind of sits there. Um, this ends so this ends late on Tuesday, um, September 16th. So you get the idea. What we have are at least two different troughs, two different dips in the jet. And there's probably another one coming in later that week that, to, that we can't get to in this forecast. So um, it remains active for a lot of the West. Okay, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this uh, this mountain weather update on this Sunday. Don't forget, I'll have my winter forecast coming out um, uh, tomorrow on Monday the 8th. I appreciate you guys, as always, tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.